True story. On the flight to Cupertino to attend the first iPhone launch to which I've ever been invited, I realized I left two things back on the East Coast. The last 1% of my iPhone's battery and the lightning cable that would have helped me solve that problem. Now, USB cables I had coming out my ears, each one of which is more than happy to charge my MacBook, my Android phones, my camera, my headphones, my microphones, my field recorder, but not the iPhone, which, devoid of its crucial cable with proprietary plug, remained sadly inert until I bought another. Well, it turns out that that was the last lightning cable that I'll ever need to buy. Today, in the Steve Jobs Theater, Apple confirmed that my dream of charging all my gadgets with a single cable is finally at hand. And even if you're not as stoked as I am about Apple finally embracing the universal part of USB, there are optical, metallurgical, and even action-oriented reasons. The iPhone 15 is a bigger upgrade than it seems. I get it. The, the iPhone 15 doesn't seem all that different than the 14, which means it's not all that different from the 13 or even the 12 before that. Form factor fatigue is a big part of what drove me to foldables as my daily drivers, and this is indeed just another rectangle. But as rectangles go, it's a pretty special one. The iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max make three major changes in addition to that USB-C port I opened with. Starting with one I wasn't sure I was going to love. I've always appreciated the iPhone's mute switch because I also loved it on the phones that came before it. The Palm Trio and Centro I carried before the iPhone was a thing. But in a world where most people leave their phone constantly muted, this kind of single-purpose switch has probably outlived its usefulness. So Apple replaced it with something I've appreciated on many smartphones over the years, a customizable action button. The best thing about this is that out of the box, it does the exact same thing the old alert slider did. You just press and hold it to toggle the ringer on or off, and the phone vibrates with a distinctive haptic buzz for each one. So you know which mode you're in without having to look at it. If you're not interested in that, you can set it instead to toggle the flashlight or open the camera. And when you're in the camera, it'll double as a shutter button. Or, my personal favorite, you can set it to take a voice memo when you press and hold. Why is this my favorite? Well, because my first ever mobile phone had a dedicated button for recording memos like these. And I'm a sucker for nostalgia, which you know. Actually, maybe my favorite feature of the action button overall is that it might prompt Android manufacturers to bring back buttons like these. They used to be on so many phones, and I, I truly miss them, because it never stopped being a good idea. Also a good idea? Titanium. Custom made. Titanium alloy. It's what they use on the space shuttle. For years, Apple has relied on stainless steel to give the iPhone the kind of heft that reassures folks that spending over a thousand bucks on a smartphone is a good idea. But heft is, you know, heavy. By preserving the aluminum frame and replacing the steel with grade 5 titanium, Apple has brought the weight down. And by contouring the edges, it's made the phone more comfortable to hold. What I like about this, though, is that it didn't go back to the more rounded, pillowy footprint of the iPhone 6 era. You get the sharp looks that came back around with the iPhone 12, but an ergonomic grip that doesn't dig into your palms as much. You can see it in my eyes. It feels very good. If there's a downside to the use of titanium, it's speculative. The metal is difficult to anodize, which means it can be more difficult to colorize. Apple says it used a PVD coating instead, but even so, this year we're seeing much more muted casing colors on the Pro and Pro Max. Black, white, and what I'll call barely blue. So if I were buying one, I'd go for the raw, natural titanium colorway that really doubles down on the metallic look, with a brushed finish that cuts down on the fingerprints versus last year's side rails. It's what they use on the space shuttle. Oh, before we close out the construction segment, Apple pointed out that it re-engineered the internal chassis to make the iPhone more repairable by making the glass backplate easier to replace, which dovetails with its recent reversal regarding right to repair. 
The final major change came only to the Pro Max, because the 6.7-inch version of the iPhone was the only one big enough to accommodate it. After four generations of arch-rival Samsung giving buyers the option of crazy, twisted optic telephoto cameras on its Ultra series of smartphones, the iPhone finally sports a super zoom of sorts of its own. The Pro Max replaces the 3x zoom of the iPhone 15 Pro with a 5x telephoto that's clever. Instead of just being mounted sideways, it forces the light to bounce back and forth in this kind of stair-step arrangement and cheats physics that way. I still think Samsung is going to have the edge in extreme zoom situations with its native 10x optical modules, but we'll see how that plays out in the review. One thing I'm not worried about is Apple's continued dominance in mobile video, and portraits, and all those other ineffables that make iPhone cameras so reliable. The three-axis stabilization is twice as effective as the 14 Pro, and because each photo contains a full focus map, you can adjust the focus of the entire shot after the fact. Now, this is nothing new in smartphones. We've seen manufacturers playing with this capability as far back as four years ago with the Nokia 9. And honestly, I've never found it all that useful. But Apple being Apple, it includes a real-world application for it. Automatic portrait mode. That means you don't need to remember to set the camera mode before you shoot a portrait. You can create one after the fact. I think that's pretty cool. Oh, and when you want to export big video files or even record directly to an external storage drive, the Pro and Pro Max have USB 3 data transfer to make that process faster. There are lots of features I didn't get to here, like the brighter screens, dynamic island coming downrange to the 15 and 15 plus, Qi 2 charging, and Apple's sustainability efforts. But none of them made me break out in a big, goofy grin like this feature coming to the new Apple Watch Series 9 and Apple Watch Ultra 2 in October. So the watch takes data from the heart rate sensor, accelerometer, and gyro, and it feeds it into a faster neural engine in the new S9 chipset. And the result is that the watch can recognize when you tap your thumb and forefinger together. And that means you can scroll lists, press buttons, and answer and end calls without even touching the screen. It feels like the future in a way I'm frankly not used to experiencing from an Apple product. And better yet, it actually works really well. I got to use it for a few minutes and the watch got my taps right the first time, every time. We'll see how it fares out in the real world when I get a chance to review these. If you wanted me to come back from Cupertino with news of an Apple foldable, well, yeah, me too. But the fact is that the iPhone is the most profound success story in smartphones. And while that's still true, the one thing you don't want to do is say, hey, we got a great product here. Let's change it. I think it's inevitable that Apple will someday release a multimodal iPhone of some kind, whether foldable or rollable. But today, the changes the company decided to make make a lot of sense. And the same goes for the things that stayed the same like most of the pricing. Now, there is a way to make your iPhone feel a little fresher, and that's my sponsor, dbrand. You know the drill, dbrand lets you re-add the real leather that Apple and other OEMs are taking away, or skin your phone in any number of colors and textures, or try something new with the Ghost Case. Transparent, MagSafe-ready, and built especially to resist that yellowing that happens to most cases over time. Dbrand your device at the link in the description. This video was produced following a hands-on session at Apple's Cupertino headquarters, the last square on my smartphone HQ bingo card and a site I'm grateful to have finally been invited to. That said, Apple had no editorial input, copy approval rights, or early preview of this content, and my travel and lodging were covered by my publisher. Please subscribe to the Mr. Mobile so you don't miss my upcoming reviews, which will feature a return to my typical voiceover quality instead of these road mics for the road on a breezy but otherwise beautiful day outside in California. Till next time, from Michael Fisher, thanks for watching and stay mobile, my friends.